Hey there, folks. Chuck here, and welcome to Diecast Breakdown. A special welcome to all of the Anthony Schmidt fans who are joining us today for the first time. For those who don't know, we're a video podcast that breaks down diecast collecting, customizing, and culture. You can find us here on YouTube or on your favorite podcasting app. And we are so excited that we are talking to Anthony Schmidt today. For the three of you who don't know who Anthony is, he is a young man with autism that has turned his passion for cars into a beautiful photography career. He has created these incredible force perspective images that have gone viral across the internet. He has over 800,000 followers on Instagram and TikTok and is just doing some really amazing stuff with model cars, building them, photographing them, and displaying them. So we were thrilled to sit down and talk with him today. Before we get started, a quick shout out to our executive producer level patrons. That would be Twice Diecast, Video Geek Productions, First and 64th Customs, and Donald Rashik. If you want to know more about supporting this show, you can visit Diecast Breakdown. Dot com And by the way, we've got a new merch store, so look below this video on YouTube and you'll see a link to our all-new merch store. That is a great way to support this show and look stylish while doing it. All right, let's get to the interview. Here we go. You're watching DieCast Breakdown with Chuck Ellis, David Johns, and Mark McHotwheel. So sit back, strap in, and hang on. The breakdown starts now. Well, hey there, folks. Chuck here, and welcome to Diecast Breakdown. I am joined, as I often am, by my amazing hosts, Mr. David Johns. What's up, everybody? And Mr. Mark McHotwheel. How's it going? I feel I like I need some sunglasses here. You do. I'm sorry. Or just glasses in general. Well, we've got a, a very special show today. We are joined by a gentleman that I've been looking forward to talking to for a very long time, Mr. Anthony Schmidt of Anthony Schmidt Photography. How you doing, Anthony? Good. And for the three people who are watching that don't know, Anthony is... An amazing young man. He's done a lot of really cool photography, and he takes things that are really, really small and he makes them look really, really big. And he does it like nobody else I've ever seen. And I have followed model builders for a very long time, and he has done something that model builders and miniature makers alike have often struggled to do, which is to get that perfect perspective, to get that right angle, to make things look like they are full scale and then interpolate them with the actual large things in the background, actual full size buildings. And he has several books out. He is postcards, calendars. There's a, a new t-shirt. He was just the grand marshal in his city parade. Jay Leno owns a copy of your book. So Anthony, why don't we start at the beginning and just kind of talk about like, what happened the first time you really like took out a you shoot on an iPhone, right? Yes. Yeah. So so tell me tell me a bit about that. Like when you when you first decided that you wanted to start taking pictures of cars. Well, at age six, I first started off my first photo was of a wooden car. It looked I even though the car wasn't that realistic, I somehow made it look that realistic and that just how I started the hobby. Fair enough. I opened up I opened up my first Instagram account when I was nine. Mm -hmm. And I only have a hundred. It was like, help me get to a hundred followers. Help me get to a hundred followers. But now I'm at literally over 850,000. That's amazing. That's a, that's a lot. David has like a hundred. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can, I can lend you 65 followers, Anthony. You guys will be having some good followers by the end of tonight. I know we we appreciate that we're getting the Anthony Schmidt bump. I think we'll have at least a million, yeah, at least a million extra. So you started at age six. By age nine, you had an Instagram, and I, I think I really started to follow your work when you were about thirteen. Is that about the time that things really started to blow up for you? That was that was a year before that. Okay, age twelve. Yeah. Age twelve when things blew up really big. Do, do you remember that moment, that first moment when you really started to get attention? What what happened in that moment? Just more 
few things went viral and more mm -hmm. news crews were coming to ask me for interviews and collection tours. Mm -hmm. And I got given my first vehicle back then. Your first real, real vehicle? Yeah, real full-size one. It was a 1957 Ford Custom. And that was given mm -hmm. to me by Greg Wilkinson. He, he gave it to me because he felt I should have it. And I reminded me of him when he was little. Mm -hmm. Back at the That's time. That's amazing. It's a nice gift. It's very cool. And do you still have that car? Yes. Never going to sell it. No. Never going to sell it. That's great. I, I still have my fir first car, too. What was yours? Mine's a 1964 Plymouth Valiant. Is that a real car? Or a it's... A real car. Yep. That's my, my real full size car. I got good. It's a small car, but he can fit inside of it. I actually have a few of those in this collection. Yeah. I've got a red one, uh, two red ones. One's been repainted, one's original. I got a silver one. Oh, that's really cool. So you're a model collector too. Yes. So what was your first model car? Oh, I'm getting interviewed now. My first model car was a Volkswagen Beetle. It was a, a Ravel plastic model kit. It was pink, and it kind of had some like 80s graphics on it. It was kind of a hot rod bug, and I did not do a very good job on that one. I was, I think I was probably eight or nine when I started. Well, my first scale model car was at age two, which was a wow. 1929 Link. It was actually a 28 four-door sedan. Mm hmm. It's back there, but very cool. I need to get some gloves. Oh, help. you still have it. That's really cool. Yes. Yeah. That's really get, fragile. I handle most of my gloves. Yeah. Mm. All my vehicles, I handle them with a glove. Mm. That's very smart because it's, it's, you know, Mark so. is a specialist with paint. So he knows all about what happens when you handle stuff without gloves and you get those little micro scratches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he does paint. So does he use an airbrush? No, I don't. I don't paint myself. I correct paint, so just polishing, wet sanding, stuff like that. So no, no yeah. painting. Mark's really good at making things shiny. Well, I do full yeah. on paint jobs and customizing, lowering, you name it. I probably do it. Well, I'll have to bring a car to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, since I got famous, people were just scrapping me and donating me like tons of vehicles that there. So the, these guys, these older dudes who were passing away who had these massive miniature collections mm -hmm. their daughters or their sons were reaching out to us and they said that there's no one else they feel should have it than us so they were just donating them one by one on our front doorstep that's really cool wow which which models do you like better the plastic ones or the die cast ones both the same do you have a scale that you prefer a lot of scales mm -hmm. uh, 124 124 118 132 one to one, one to eighth, one to sixth, one mm -hmm. twelfth, one sixteenth, one fourteenth. So I think anything bigger than like... Those are a lot easier to photograph too. They've got better proportions. They're more designed for the kind of kind of stuff you do. Well, I do have a few of the 164 scale, but what I'll do is I'll put it with its bigger me in my collection. I have the mini me of the big one and then the 164 scale. That's right. That's cool. The thing is, they're not that great photos, but they will fit if I have like a, a one to one sixty scale on my on the dashboard mm -hmm. of one. Sure. Oh, that's yeah, cool. It's a good idea. You can use it as a miniature. It'll work in a pinch. You do weathered cars too. Like you like to do cars that look like they're kind of rusty and dusty. When when did you start doing that? Since age nine. Yeah, there's a, yeah, I can show you that beetle. No, it's a do you know, sure. no. I'll probably show this. So this is my whole barn right there. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Other cars. There's a 63 mm -hmm. Dodge 338 there. You might have with some bugs. And believe it or not that my real truck is actually going to be in a one. You got a rat rod. The 54 I was talking about. Nice choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a, a rat rod. Well, just primer right now, but at the end, it's going to have that patina look. Nice. Hey, Anthony, what scale are the vehicles behind you on those shelves? Those are all 118s. Except for that Mustang right there and the Beetle, I have, they're actually, there's, there's the 164 version of them next to them. So have you photographed every one of them? Yes, sir. I won't miss one. 
Awesome. Do you usually like photograph them as soon as you get them or do you, you know, have a line or a, a list? As soon as I get them. Boom. You're taking photos of them. Yeah. That's, it's wel- welcome to the family. So how many cars do you guys have? Real cars or, to- you know, collector cars? Well, I know that, I know that David has a, as David Johns has a 1995 Chevrolet Corvette, a white one. You you nailed it. You got it. And mm-hmm. I know that Mark McCotwheel has a, I think it's a 1970s Datsun of some sort. 69. Very close. And yep. And then Chuck has a 1964 Plymouth Valiant. Mm-hmm. And? And what's his daily driver? Try, try and guess what truck he has, Anthony. A 2016 Ford F-150. That's a good guess. He would love to have that. Uh, that would yeah. be a much more reliable car than my daily is a 1977 Dodge D-100 long bed. Cool. Uh, with the slant six engine. Cool. And what shape is it in? Shape of a truck. It's kind of like the, the, like it's patinaed. It was an old road construction t- truck in Oklahoma. Uh, so it's from out West. So it doesn't have a lot of rust on it, but it's got this really nice patina on the hood and roof. And so it's kind of beat up. I use it as my work truck. And then how is the 64 Valiant? Is that a, is it the, is it the right? Is it a Valiant fast? No, that's the, the Barracuda. So this is my daughter and my, my Valiant. And I've had it since I was 15 well, years old. So I've had it over 25 years. Yes. Well, I've got, well, how many cars do you have now? I have got those two, and then I have probably six or seven thousand one sixty four scale cars. Sixty seven thousand. Six or seven thousand. No, six or seven thousand. Six or seven. I haven't. I haven't really sat down and counted them. I don't really. <laughs> I don't really have the energy for that, but I, I should do that someday. I also got an XL three. Yeah, how much all the cars are worth, and what they are, and mm-hmm. so, so I paid for them too. Yeah. You know, I've got a few. I also got a few of the full size ones that you can drive in. Yeah. I got the 57 Ford. I also have a, I also got a 1959 Studebaker Silver Hawk. Mm-hmm. It just had an engine rebuilt on it. We've done, I also have a 1976 GMC motorhome. Nice. And then I just got the 54, 54 Chevy mm-hmm. 3100. I just picked up. That's going to be a next project. Nice. That's really cool. I love those old GMC motorhomes. If I wanted to start, photographing 118 scale like you what brand do you think is best that gives a, a the best photo what brand is that well i can tell you a, a lot of them there's actually a lot of them there's auto art sunstar babargo and danbury mint and boss too they're actually made out of like resin there's also like a lot of these brands are pretty good like ac ace me but i can tell you what brand isn't the best well, Motor Max 118 scale is good, but the 124 Motor Max are like so not as detailed. Like the body lines aren't quite right. Mm-hmm. And like big door gaps. Yeah. But yeah. The, surprisingly, some of the dealer promo cars in 124 are pretty detailed. Mm-hmm. Some of them are, but yeah. not. There's some that can be like warped and kind of less detail. Mm-hmm. But they're good collector items, though. I have the I have the dealer promo car for my 64 Valiant. Is it like, is it red just like, is it red just like mine? I think it was red. Somebody painted it tan. I'm going to try and paint it to make it look like my car though. But I know the, yeah. I know the one you're talking about. I've seen versions of it on eBay and stuff, but I couldn't afford one. Oh, it's the original, it's the original paint. Don't repaint it because you should leave the original patina on it if it's an mm. antique. Yeah, this was a, yeah, this was like, I think a kid customized it at some point. So that's a plastic kit then. We'll be back with more Diecast Breakdown after this word from our sponsors. What up, guys? Your boy Big A here. This message is to encourage everyone in the Diecast community to participate in D-Dog, a.k.a. Diecast Day of Giving. I know I'm in. Are you in? Here's this week's small channel shout out. Big Daddy Diecast. If you have a favorite diecast channel with less than 700 subscribers and you'd like to see them highlighted on a future episode, email us at diecastbreakdown at gmail.com. The Diecast Media Network Store is here. Wear your passion with pride. Featuring designs from Diecast Breakdown, 
Flying Valiant Builds, plus unique designs inspired by diecast culture from Justin Ellis. Visit tpublic.com slash diecast media network now. What's up, guys? This is Derek from Honest Diecast, and you know I'm going to be participating in D-Dog 23. That's Diecast Day of Giving. I encourage you to join. Join for the cause. Calling all customizers to help raise awareness for the Diecast Day of Giving. Diecast Breakdown is hosting its first ever custom build-off. Winners will be chosen by special guest judge Eddie Castro, art director at Maisto International. Maisto is even providing prizes for Eddie's choices. Here's how to enter. Select any Maisto diecast in any scale. Choose any theme or style you like and get customizing. Submit one before and one after photo to diecastbreakdown at gmail.com with the subject line Maisto by September 16th. Winners will be announced on a future episode of Diecast Breakdown. Remember when sharing photos or videos of your build to mention Diecast Day of Giving or hashtag DDog to raise awareness for the Diecast Day of Giving and our mission to collect 20,000 toy cars for children in need. For more information on the Diecast Day of Giving, visit DrivenDreams.org. Let's build something amazing together. And now back to Diecast Breakdown. So can we get some photography questions thrown at Anthony since he's the master? And we don't, we don't have a photographer on our show. Well, Anthony, if yeah, you, you go do. outside and like, what is the perfect day and weather to shoot if, for people that want to take pictures of their diecast? Oh, golden hour, like at sunset. Yeah. This other thing is, but pretty much any time of day, like 12 o'clock to noon, even but if you want to do it at night, you have to have like a lot of like street light and sort of or some fancy building at night. Right. I just did a around 7 p.m. yesterday. I did a pretty good shot of a 1949 Ford shoebox. It had like a gold sunset and it might make a calendar in one year. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, well, outside right now, it's kind of cloudy. But the thing is, I'm doing a junkyard shoot of some cars I'm going to be mm -hmm. restoring out today after this. But. To stay updated to see that we gotta gotta follow you can do rainy day shots sometimes will look good if i have a platform you can just dump some water on it and it will look awesome well that, i'm glad i asked because some yeah some people would be scared to take pictures in the rain i usually do it when it's like not raining and it's just cloudy and they need to dump that water on it and it gives it the good effect oh that's smart okay do you use like a spray bottle it's a water bottle but the thing is, I only usually do it with cars that are the paint isn't as perfect on because mm -hmm. I don't want to. They wouldn't be taking a car that nice out in the rain. Like seeing a car, I usually do. McCott, Will, you got any photography questions? Yeah, I'm just recovering from that, that blow. There's no other photographers on the show. <laughs> Published <laughs> photographer. <laughs> Mark likes to take photos. Anthony, wow. It's, it's rough being on the show sometimes. So I'm <laughs> glad you're here for support. So I have a very important, it's not photography, I'll, I'll ask a photography one after this. This is probably the most important question of the show. If you were to choose a car, I'm going to name off a couple cars. You let me know which one you would choose. Mm -hmm. We've talked about some of them. Mm -hmm. 1969 Datsun 510, a 64 yeah. Valiant, a Saturn SL, or a PT Cruiser, a.k.a. I PT Snoozer. PT, PT Loser. I call them PT Loser. <laughs> PT Snoozer, PT Loser. Either, you can either call them PT Loser or PT Bruiser if you make it a derby car. Yeah, so which which one would you choose if you had to choose? Which one of those cars is your favorite? All of them except the PT Loser. It's got to be the Saturn, Anthony. Yeah, all of them except um, for the PT Loser. Right, we'll, co we'll come back to that question. <laughs> I think he's, he, sa he said Saturn. He said Saturn, I heard Very it. diplomatically, but... Yeah, David's a Saturn... Yeah, well, that one's, if you're going to get hit by a car, that's the yeah. one to get hit by. You're going to bounce. It's not going to, it's just going to send you the plastic. Boom, boom. <laughs> I also did do a shoot one time of a 51 GMC crushing a PT loser and a Heritage Health Risk, which is what <laughs> HHR stands for. Chevy HHR. <laughs> yeah. You know, those were designed by the same guy. Man. Yeah, I know. I believe that. And he needs to. That, that guy's feelings are really hurt right now. I can't remember his name. Yeah. He's probably dead. Yeah. Who knows? Probably. Who knows? Anthony, I became one of your biggest fans when you said PT Loser down in, when we met you down in Las Vegas, because that really yes. brought a lot of warmth. And I said that I would be crushing a PT Loser. And that actually did happen since I did it. Mm -hmm. I believe that. This is the, the shot I did of it right here. This is it. Oh, look at that. Smash. Hey, that was actually July 4th or 2023. 
you can see the mm -hmm. HHR in the background, and then mm -hmm. the so both that same guy's designs were getting ruined. I, I put a firework in the back and we lit it. Oh yeah, yeah. I like the smoke effects yeah, on that one. Yeah, and then we also did a, a other shoot. Of, well, some people would call the O five to the O three or O five Thunderbirds Thunder Turds, but I like those. So I'll call them the Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thunder Turds. That will also show disrespect to the 1955 model year, too. Yeah, they were pretty inspired by those, the original 55s. Yeah, they did a pretty good job on that one. I think that's a design that will look better with age. I think that yeah. one will age well. Yeah. That was actually a pretty good design, but the, the Chevrolet Super Slow Ride, which is based off the same truck I have. The SSR, yeah. It's super cool. Yeah, hey, Anthony, have you ever, have you ever shot with, with film before, like old school film, or is it just just iPhone mm -hmm. only. Is there anything else you've ever used? I do black and white. I did some 70s and 80s retro filters. Mm -hmm. I've done a few 60s but filters. 90s filter. No, no, no film though itself. I have done an actual film of okay. a few police street scenes. I did some street racing scenes, but a long time ago, but mm -hmm. they didn't really work out because back when I did that, I didn't have professional equipment. And I have a friend who's a photographer who is teaching me how to do all that. And then I'll probably come back one day and then complete those films. That's the Furious 20. They should have Anthony in the in the movies. They've got a lot of car people in those movies. So. Yeah, I do. Yes, I did a do a scene of a 05 Impala outrunning a Crown Vic cop car. You know, Mark had a Crown Vic. Yes. It was a cop car. Yeah, it was an interceptor, and it was that's one way you can make money. You can just put it's a sad story. You can just put popo on the side of it, and then you put a siren, and they go wee wee, right. and then you can just stop random <laughs> people and write them out tickets, right. and then you can just be a free way of making money. Yeah, I'll just be pulling over PT losers all day long. I wouldn't pull anything else over. Yeah, you're under arrest. What for? Because yeah. you're having a PT, you loser. Yes, you know what else you should pull over? Fiat Multiplus. Oh, yeah. Those oh, are pretty man. ugly with the big four eyes. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm, I'm down to pull over any Fiat. Things. Yeah, those sure. things are the ugly cars. Yeah, I call them the Platypus. Yeah, they do look like a Platypus. That begs yeah. the question. Anthony, what are your top three ugliest cars ever made? I don't know. Probably a lot of them. Probably a, a 04 Scion XA. Okay. That's a good choice. Mm, that's That's legit. Yeah, probably the XB is not that bad, but when you soup it up... What do you think of Jukes? Uh, they're not good at all. They are... That's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the right answer, Anthony. You have one you you die-cast breakdown. My guy. But if you're watching this and you have one of those cars, sorry. Sorry, Aaron. No, well, that's sorry. <laughs> it is what it is. It is. It's, at the uh, end of the day, it is what it is. If you also yeah. own a Chevrolet, a Veo, sorry, your car is ugly. Mm. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, a lot of I think even Chevy Aveo owners know their cars are ugly. Uh, yeah. I actually have a friend who has one. And I told him my opinion on it. Did he cry? He wasn't too pleased. Ah, uh, well. Yeah. Yeah. And you know how car people are. They love their cars. They love their cars. Is there any car that you wish was a die cast that hasn't been made into a die cast yet? There's a few of them, but I think, well, pretty much, well, all the ones that were well a while back yes but then they made a few new of them now but there's only one car that i can think of well they just released a 1988 chrysler new yorker i'm still looking for it it's probably i don't know how long it's been out but i know that there's i saw one guy posting a picture of one i know i have no idea where he got it from there's also a a bunch of 1950s hudson's and stuff well the the later model of a 57 but mm -hmm. I actually just got one of those in our collection now that it took me years to find. Because some of those cars are just like so rare that they're harder to find. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not, not true. There's, the four doors aren't that hard to find. There's one right there. I probably have more four doors in my collection than two doors. That's a, that's a rare thing. Most people prefer the two door cars. I think four doors are fun. It's more room for your friends. Yeah, for parties. And I think that yeah. every car that was made before. 86 they have a model of it in everybody style mm. they do well now they do but before they didn't have the 1957 hudson but they just came out with one so i got one instantly nice that i i pressed a 77 ltd the hudson 
I requested a what did I request? The Ampicar. But mm -hmm. I just got one of those in the collection. So if he makes it, that's just bonus. I requested well, quite a few cards I didn't know they made models of until after I left, I looked it up and then they have turned out they had models of it somewhere and I found them. I live not too far from Disney World and they actually have a place in Disney World where you can ride amphi cars in the water. They'll take them in the water and drive you around. It's really cool. Can you do wheelies? No, but they do not do wheelies in the water. They're very slow. Very, very slow. That's, you know what 770 means? It means seven miles per hour on water and 70 on land. Huh. Wow. How about that? That's cool. I didn't know that. Hey, I didn't know they could do 70. <laughs> yes, they could. Anthony, have you gotten to take any pictures of cars, diecast, or otherwise in another country? Or has everything been in the USA? I've been to Canada once. I did a few photos. Are we going to have the Anthony Schmidt world tour one day? Maybe. It would be fun to go to Europe or Europe one and get some photos. Yeah, mm. you could shoot a Citroën or a Renault in front of the Eiffel yeah. Tower. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I've got one right there that's waiting for that shot. Mm. Is it leaking oil? Just need a plane ticket. Yeah. Well, my trip, I went to the Motor Detroit. Yeah, tell us about Detroit. What all did you do in Detroit? That looked yeah. like a fun trip. I went to go see the GM Design Center. I went to go see the, the Gilmore Stalls Collection. I went to see a bunch of car shows. Then we went to the Studebaker Museum in South Bend, Indiana. Like a five-hour road trip. That's super cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. What about any other trips this past summer? You've been a busy, busy photographer. Where all have you been? Well, I've been to Vegas several times. Mm -hmm. I've pretty much been to almost every state. It's a lot of traveling. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I did the Model T in front of that in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Model T factory. Awesome. You see it really right cool. behind me. There, there's my okay, okay, you stars. Well, look at that. We can't, we can see it. A 1961. Yeah, that four is door. really cool. Out there. So, if you think that you can't get models of four doors, well, you can, they mm -hmm. do make models of them, but they're just more expensive mm -hmm. and more rare. Yeah, because there's two more doors. So, just they have to charge you for the extra doors. <laughs> the extra doors cost more. <laughs> more doors. I guess that if you're, Poor and you can't afford a, a four door scale. All you can just cut a rear door into it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Good idea. Yeah, but I don't usually do that that much. But I've done it only <laughs> once. Yeah, but because it was a car that didn't have in four door yet, so I made one. Yeah. What about a five door? Can you tell your fans where maybe a little sneak peek on where they might see you in the future? You have any trips planned coming up? Well, they can see me everywhere in Woodenville, the Pony Express. They can see me at the cut shop. They can see me at the, well, I don't have much planned right now. I can't recognize too much. Every, I'll be walking in the grocery store and they'll be, there he is. Yeah, I get the same thing <laughs> all the time. People are just chasing after me. Mark Mark knows how that is. That must take a lot of getting used yeah. to. Yeah. You do? No. Are you? No. Not, not really, no. No. We're working on it. I yeah. say, do you know who I am? And they say, no. And I said, yeah, I, uh, I didn't figure you did. Great. You know, I start wearing a disguise in the store. Right? I think you should yeah. definitely wear a, a mustache. A mustache. A beard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dye your hair blonde. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. just put a, make it long hair. Yeah. Long hair. Don't care. Heavy metal rocker. Where yes. I also get that. Uh, probably, mm -hmm. probably not all that, but. Yeah, probably not that much, but something like that. Do you have any <laughs> photographers that inspire you? Any other people uh, that you follow that you like? Not really, but there's not people that are like the people that are inspired by me, but Yeah. I I inspired by them back. Yeah. Not a lot of people doing what you do exactly. That's the way that's the way yeah. it should be. Yes, but I you I do help a lot of people and get who are inspired by me and I'll help them get famous too sometimes well that's cool you like to share other people's work like what i'm gonna do to your guys's work yeah our work is not good so help you we we salute you yeah unless so. i tell them all tell them all not to buy from you guys and not follow you i'm not gonna do that 
you could. Yeah. <laughs> you could. That's but that might work that might work against you because reverse psychology. Psychology. <laughs> yeah. So you've got your uh, you've got a new calendar that's about to come out. Can you tell me a little bit about that one? I got a regular one and a first responders one that's all fire trucks mm-hmm. and stuff. Oh, mm-hmm. sweet. Awesome. Good. What made you do that one specific to first responders? Well, the Tunnels of Towers Foundation Foundation came and they got back to us. They wanted me to do a calendar for them. Awesome. So yeah, well done. I'll mm-hmm. probably have that out here. Like, well, it's, we don't, we can't be selling them now. It's on pre-order now, but they'll be mm-hmm. coming to our house from printing in a few days. That's really cool. Are you going to sign them? What? Are you going to sign them? Like autograph them? Are you going to? Maybe some of them. Some of them. But you can so, see that's really cool. Back here, you can see got down there. I've got three identical PT losers. Yeah. And I also got this least favorite yeah. car. Yeah. And the only thing that they're good for is to see this is my hand and this is a monster truck. <laughs> yeah, just run them over yeah. it. Yeah. That's the only thing they're good for. That's, I like that. Do people ever ask you to come and take a picture of their car with a model that you have? Uh, yeah. Sometimes I've done it with my vehicles before. Yeah. But you can also, but believe it or not, that that. That the PT loser isn't as bad as the XA. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's a pretty ugly car. That's true. They're both pretty bad, but the XA's I, like all those early two thousands hatchbacks weren't that great. Yeah, and then the mm-hmm. Nissan Juke. We well, let's not forget about that. I think we talked about that. Earlier. The Cube is another bad one. Yeah, the Cube mm-hmm. got a whole list. I'll leave it or not, but yeah. I think that there's this one car that I don't really care for that much. It's the eighty seven Cavalier Z twenty four. Ooh, that's a that's a mm. rough one. I I remember then. Yeah. 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 I don't really like the Cavalier kind of one. I I think that the last year, of, like the eighties Cavaliers aren't that good. Not even the if there's a base model one isn't great either. Mm-hmm. But the Caprice from the same time range was good though. Well, and then they had the Cadillac Cavalier that was the Cimarron. That Cimarron. Yeah. yeah. Those are. Yeah. Those are actually not that bad though. The, you yeah, know what the. But- you know what the 1981 Cadillac Seville is? They had a joke that a piece of the ceiling fell on the clay model. <laughs> and that's why it had the bobtail on the and back. That's why it has oh my God. Like that. It just squished it. Yes. Yeah. That was actually one of my favorite Hot Wheels growing up was the 82 Seville. that They just yeah. re-released it. And yeah. I don't know why. I just I, I always liked those big Cadillac luxury cars. I don't either. But, yeah. You like, you like demolition derby cars? I do like demolition derby yeah. cars. I've built I've built several custom demolition derby cars. Well, what of what, what, what cars? Hopefully, they're cars that no one cares about. Oh no, they're they're small cars. They're Hot Wheels cars, like the oh, okay. Dodge oh, Monaco yeah. and like the Hot Wheels Cruise Bruiser and that that kind of thing. Uh, no, not the Monaco. That should be saved. But yeah, yeah, I did get a fan who donated us a bunch of demolition derby cars of like cars that wouldn't be though. Like a 57 yeah. Bel Air wagon, a few 1940s Mercury's, but I'm going to make them into back in the street cars. Well, that's cool. But transfer the derby stuff and then put them on cars that nobody cares about, like HHRs and PT losers and mm-hmm. a few maybe early 2000s escapes of some sort, some Ford Contours. And- Anthony, have you ever made any of your... 118 no, scale cars look like a demolition derby car like have you ever gone in and made them look damaged well uh i'm planning on doing a uh i'm actually gonna be doing a whole rc demolition derby that people can come to at my well pretty soon we're gonna be building a track i don't know how mm-hmm. long from now i'll have it all set up at a track and then i'll have the cars that people can drive and race that's really cool at your house i don't know where but i still have to plan that and I'm having, I have like, a, they're not cars out of my collection, but they're cars that I'm, I'm getting just, again, like junker cars, used ones that are already beat up to do that with. I'm also making sure that they're all cars that no one cares about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to upset people too much. I used a 1959 Studebaker Silverhawk, which they do use in real demolition derbies a lot. Oh, wow. Which they, because they should, they, they should yeah. stop. They're going to start running out of those pretty soon. Mm-hmm, Pretty soon, yeah. mine will be the last one left. Right, there are not many Silverhawks left already, so they should be using yeah. Saturns. Yeah, I'm not going to demolition derby a Saturn, but 
Yeah, just it, fenders are blowing up and stuff. Yes, they do demolition derby 1971 Chevy Kingswoods a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. Hornets. Yeah, those I've, station wagons I've, are really hard to yeah. take down. Yeah, but they like the like the 1950s and 60s body styles are what they use a lot because they're like so unstoppable. But I'm not using that for our our Steve Derby. We're using like these are mostly 90s and early 2000s four door sedans. We got a few Camrys in there. We got some Tauruses and stuff like that in there. Hey Anthony, did you have a did you have a good time in Vegas earlier this year at the convention? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. What was your favorite part about that? I got got to meet several famous people besides us. <laughs> well, I got to meet the whole I got to meet the whole cast from Duke's Hazard. That's right. Oh yeah. Luke Duke, mm-hmm. yeah. Daisy Duke. Yeah, we we shared an elevator with Luke Duke. I met the Fast and Furious guys. The mm-hmm. Yeah, I met Jesse, I forget his real name. Chad. Friend of the show. Chad. Yep, Chad Lindbergh. I got to meet one guy. Yeah, I forget what guy it was, but he was getting parts Hector? in the movie for a guy. Oh, yeah, Hector. Yeah, mm-hmm. Hector. He's. No, I think his name's Noel. Yeah, he's, he plays Hector and everything. Yeah. I got to meet the guy from the Maestro Company and Hot and the Mattel Company. Yeah, those guys mm-hmm. are fun. Oh, talk. you met uh, Eddie? Do you meet Eddie? Yeah, Eddie Castro is his name. Yo, he's been on this show, too. He's been on our show a few times. He has? Yep. Yeah, he's actually, we're going to do a custom diecast contest where everybody builds a Maisto car, and he's going to be the judge, and Maisto's going to give away prizes. Yeah, you should make some new cars, but one car they haven't yeah. really made models of yet is an, an 05 Ford Freestyle. You hear that, Eddie? Yeah, we'll tell Eddie that he needs to make that. Well, there's a, three, a 3D print of one, but there's no diecast ones yet. Mm-hmm. We'll put your name on the side of it. Schmidt style. <laughs> uh, Anthony... I- I've got a, I've got a, a friend, JC, and he and my brother, who also is a person with autism, we all went out and hung out together at his shop and we recorded live. And I, I told him we were going to be talking to you and I asked him if he had any questions and he wanted to know, he said, ask Anthony if there was something that you wish you could share with people or the world. Like, what, what is it that you would like to tell the world? To always follow your dreams and do what you want to do. Don't let anyone stop you. Yeah, that is amazing, Anthony. Good message. Very well said. Yeah, the my my like I said, my brother has autism and he is amazing. He got his master's degree in graphic design. He designs all the stuff for our channel. He designed this shirt I'm wearing right now. Uh he is he's my younger brother, but he's inspires me in just about everything. He's a he's an amazing man. And so we were, that's one of the reasons why I was so excited to talk to you because, you know, I'm neurodivergent as well. I have ADHD, like to a hideous level. It's amazing that I can do the show at all, but, but it's, it's kind of like you, like I get hyper-focused on something and that was kind of what happened with me and Diecast and this show. By the way, Mark McHotwheel, there's a spider on your head. It's a spider on my head? Yeah. What? Oh, it went away. I get it. <laughs> get it. Uh, he got you. Hey, what car's on your shirt? What car's on your shirt? Dotson 510. Yeah, it's like what you own in real life. Yeah. Everything is 510 with Mark. Everything's 510. I got all kinds of 510s everywhere. He drives 510 miles an hour everywhere he goes just to... Yeah, he can't, you can't even go that fast in my truck. I just have an airplane motor in his car that he goes that fast. No, he just drives 51.0 miles an hour. <laughs> 5,100, yeah. Anthony. Anthony, quick question for you. And it is quick. Favorite car movie? Go. I don't have favorites. Okay, second favorite, mm-hmm. third favorite. I don't have any. <laughs> I don't answer favorite. Gone in sixty seconds. I, yeah, I like all the. I pretty much like all. I pretty much like all the car movies that are racing and car. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. I don't have no. I'm not gonna say what my favorite movie is. Yeah, I mean uh, that. That is. Yeah, I don't no. expect you to give that away. That's that's a sensitive subject. I want to see that new Gran Turismo movie. That looks like fun. Pretty cool. They just made a new Fast and Furious movie, too. I don't know how mm-hmm. many of you guys seen it. Yeah, we saw it. No, I have not seen it, and I won't. You saw it? Yeah. I saw it. It was fun. I, as a good, I saw part one. I, yeah. I need to go watch I gave up on him, Anthony. It's it's really silly. Like it, it, the, the special effects are, are insane. I think that the newer ones are like isn't as good as the, like, the older ones had the good car culture and street racing, but the new ones are just yeah. like more fighting and about. Yeah. 
let's fly to space. They're like if cars were superheroes and it's it's a completely yeah. different thing from stealing DVD players and doing street races. Yeah, those older ones are just like I just mm-hmm. lived my life a quarter mile at a time, you know, and yep. for those 400 seconds, nothing else mattered. Yeah. Oh, not interested. Can't win them all. Is there uh, any any cool cards that you've got on order that we'll we'll see soon in some photos? Uh, not really. I know that well fans send me pretty often. I don't know him, but she probably know. She probably she'll probably know. You right there will know. Yeah. yeah, I let my fans surprise me. But do you even have to buy cars anymore, or do they just all come to you for free? A little bit, I buy. I buy a little bit now, but most uh, mostly they come to me. Mm. I'm, I yeah. think like eighty five percent of the collect- collection was given to me. Yeah, that that happens to a lot of people. They people find out that you you like cars, and everyone's like, "Oh, I got these cars. I'll give you like or I, I you know." Like you said, like people's relatives pass away and they give off their collections and stuff. I've had a few people give me boxes like that before. It's really cool that they're they're passing them along to someone like you who will take care of them and not just take care of them, but immortalize them and share them so thousands of people can see them. Like it must be wild to think about these all these cars that used to be just in somebody's collection on a shelf somewhere, and now hundreds of thousands of people have seen them. That's pretty cool. All right, so Anthony, don't lie. Is it cool when people recognize you in the store? Yes, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. that is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, I can't even, like, I go to a restaurant. Well, get this, one time I was at a restaurant, and then there's someone up on the table talking about me, and then I'm really right, right at the table next to them, and then I go say, hey, you realize I'm right here, and I can hear that, and they go, <laughs> And they all come get coming for pictures. They all say, "Can I get your picture?" Huh? You go, "Hello, you. can I get a picture?" That's me. Yeah, that's and then, wild. And I'm I, Anthony. That's awesome. They all take me out to go show me what they drive, and then after that, mm-hmm. I have to find another table that's hidden somewhere else. But get this: as a picture on the wall, mm-hmm. well, then the picture on the wall comes down on us. Oh wow! Oh no! Yeah, one of the most awkward dinners out ever. Yeah. yeah, it almost smushed you. I can tell you guys about one of the most hardest photo shoots. Oh, yeah. Which was about, at this, it's a Sunday, and we have this UPS truck scale mo- model that we need to shoot somewhere. Mm-hmm. So we are so we go to the uh, UPS compound. So get this. Mm-hmm. So they're closed because it's a Sunday, and we try to shoot it out, out front of the gate, but that doesn't look right. So we just pack up, and then the gates just open on us. We go in and then we set up, we take our photos, but when we're get this, when we're done, we try to get out with the gate shut and then we're trapped in there. Oh, know what to do. The SWAT team came. But then we don't have, we call, do we call the cops or do we just get sleeping back and sleep in our car for the night? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Well, eventually the security guard came and boy, he was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, you know, it's not limits, sir, do you? No. And like, yeah. sorry, sir. We're just trying to turn around. Yeah, and yep. then finally just goes to his little thing, opens the gates, and then we go out. We never go back there again. It's like never yeah. again. But, Bye. Hey, mm-hmm. but you got the shot. I was doing a photo shoot with with an actual one to one car for a magazine, and I was also in a place where they thought I shouldn't be the cops, and I was actually handcuffed and detained because they thought I shouldn't have been there. So yeah. did you get take you to jail, or did you get a criminal record, or? No, I actually had a voicemail from the city for just that said you've got permission to to shoot there, and we're gonna open the back gate because they were like how they were like how did how'd you get in here? And I was like the back gate, and they were like back. Gate. And I was <laughs> they, they asked they, you that after yeah. they handcuffed you. Yeah, they let me go, and then they came they came back. I didn't resist. I, no, no. You had to spend any no. nights in a prison cell? Not for that reason. No, no, no nights in the prison. I was like, don't shoot. Did you get tased? And if if not. Why not? Yeah, no, I didn't yeah. get tased. Yeah. No, I I wish I got tased because then I'd be a lot well, richer than I am now. Do it for the likes. Yeah. Don't touch the dial. Diecast Breakdown will be right back after these messages. Hi, everybody. I'm Andrew from Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland, encouraging you to catch the spirit of giving for the Diecast Day of Giving on October 14th, 23. This episode of Diecast Breakdown is brought to you by you. That's right. 
We are 100% viewer and listener supported, and we are so grateful for those of you who have already supported the podcast and the shows we're planning to add to the Diecast Media Network family. You can find out more about how to support this project by visiting diecastmedianetwork.com or email us about sponsoring an episode at diecastbreakdown at gmail.com. The best way you can support what we're doing right now, though, is to subscribe and share these episodes with your family, friends, and Facebook groups. Anyone you think would enjoy what we're doing. Any extra attention we can get early on will go a huge way in helping this project grow. Thank you so much for sharing this journey with us. This presentation of Diecast Breakdown is brought to you by Twice Diecast and Dots and Man Diecast on YouTube. Please visit their links in the show notes and subscribe to their channels for more epic Diecast content. Hey, this is Rodney with RD Custom Diecast and the Diecast Misfits. Last year, we knocked it out of the park with D Dog, and we encourage each and every one of you to participate this year. Please join us. And now, the thrilling conclusion of this week's episode of Diecast Breakdown. One time where I was on a, I was actually doing a shoot down in Chicago, Illinois, and... That's where I am. That's where I am right now. Yeah, I was doing a shoot down there in front of this building. We have a friend with us, so we're shooting there, and then this guy comes out of the building, he starts screaming at us, What are you guys doing here? Get lost! And he's threatening to call the cops on us. <laughs> It was a public, but it was a public parking lot, so we just all pack up and get out there. But our brave friend goes up to him like a tough guy, and then literally says, "Listen, you're gonna let these people shoot here, or else." Yeah, or else you're mm. gonna get a knuckle sandwich. He's like literally threatening. You're gonna get a sandwich full of knuckles. And we're like, no, no, don't go to him. Don't go to him. Mm. Get a deep dish sandwich yeah. in Chicago. Yeah, dangerous hanging out with Anthony. Yeah. Yes. And then the guy just finally running on the ragged edge of the law. The guy was like, fine, take your photos here. So, Anthony, if people wanted to approach you, how would that best be done? How do you like it when people approach you? When they say hi and I'm your biggest fan. It's not like I'm not eating anything. I don't like being talked to while I'm eating. That's fair. <laughs> Nobody does. I'm writing that down right now. Yep. No talking while eating. Don't talk to Anthony when he's... Okay. Okay, you stars. Okay. Anthony, yeah. Anthony, maybe you hold that up when they ask you if they can approach you and you say, okay. Okay, or yeah. no K. Okay. If you don't get the sign. I'll pick you out with me everywhere, but you see that right here. This is my... Yeah, it's your dealership. Okay, you stars. Yes. That is a really mm -hmm. cool setup. Most of those cars are four doors there, by the way. And mm -hmm. pricey. One guy posted a photo of a four door sedan. He got mad. And he said, why did you post this? Why not post a two-door? Yeah. Because it's got two more. It's better. Mm -hmm. It's better. Yeah. A lot of people have strange opinions on things. One guy even <laughs> complained that I did a two-door post sedan mm -hmm. for some reason, which that's not embarrassing. He said, I want to do two-door hardtops. And then I just took his comment down and I threw it down. just drew a marker there, a four-door, and say, oh... Yeah, we all we all get haters, don't uh, we, Anthony? You know, yeah. Haterade. Dave, David, if you could have any car, what would you get? That's not your car right now. It's not a Saturn. Any car. Okay, you want to know the truth, Anthony? Yes. Is that I think I should have been James Bond. Like, I should have been James Bond. So I would like very much an Aston Martin B. V12 Vantage. How about that? Oh. Aston Martin, please. Yeah, so any of them from the James Bond? Wait, well, the yeah. original film was from the from the 1960s, had a DB5 in it. That's a, that's one of the coolest cars ever. DB11, and then the V12 Vantage, and then I think they're making a new one with another car in it. So I think Mark and Mark and Chuck are working on that for me. And then and if Mark... If Mark McHotwheel could have any car that wasn't a Datsun 510, what would he have? Probably a Freestyle. That's probably one of my favorite cars. Yeah, 05. 05 Freestyle wow. is one of my favorite I cars. have a friend who has one that's going to the crush. <laughs> you want his? Yeah. yeah, I'll take it. We'll put a can... twin turbo engine in it, some NOS. It's a, comp it's a compact. Yeah. Whatever. And then, Chuck, if you could have any car, what would it be? Well, see, I've got 
two cars, but if I could only pick one, I, I would have to say the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters, the 1959 Miller Meteor. Cadillac. And I just think that car is so cool. And my second choice would have been the 77 Pontiac Trans Am from Smoking the Bandit. Breaking the rules? No, Chuck. You, no, yeah. absolutely. But I don't get it. two no. choices, Cut. so I, I don't get two. So We're oh, cutting that out. We're cutting oh. that out. Oh, no. It's all over now. Mm-hmm. But seriously, the Miller Meteor Cadillac from Ghostbusters, because I dress as Ghostbuster every year for Halloween. So that's my favorite costume. He dresses up as Slimer. What? You bought all you guys' as Dream for Car Garage. Gosh, I didn't know that these questions were going to be asked. I would have I would have done a lot more studying, Anthony. Now I feel... Can we get any car, Anthony? Like any car in the world? Yeah, mm-hmm. any car in the whole wide world. It doesn't have to be out yet either. I think I'll take a Countach. I will take a Porsche 928. I will take a Ferrari Testarossa. And then I will take a 93 Saturn. Thank you. Nice. Yes. Hmm. And then, and Chuck, how about you? I would take, well, I'm, I'm, I would take the 77 Pontiac Trans Am so I could do Smokey and the Bandit. I would have a 78. Dodge Warlock pickup truck with a 440. I would have a GMC motorhome like you have. I love those things. Yeah. And I would take a 74 Plymouth Trail Duster. Cool. With the removable hardtop. Yeah. And Mark, what would you have? I've got three here, Anthony, but I'm working on the fourth here. So I've got to... May the fourth be with you. Yeah. McLaren F1 has always been one of my favorite cars. Oh, classic. GT3 RS. Mm-hmm. doesn't really matter what year. I don't really care. And then the 67 Shelby GT500 Eleanor mm-hmm. would be one of my favorite cars of all time. And we'll just say, then we'll go with another Shelby, the Shelby Daytona. It's a $17 million car. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. And then who are some cars you guys dislike? Saturn SL. Ha ha, David. You hear that? Yeah. yeah, that one that one keeps me up at night. I have bad dreams about that one. I've had a lot of therapy because of that car. It's just the shape. It's, I keep. I think you've said enough. It's the shape mm-hmm. of it. Just it's it haunts me at night. Ooh, I can see one behind you right now. No, no, don't say that. Oh, ah, ah, yeah. there's a P- there's a PT loser on me. Yeah, and and Chuck, what's a car you don't like? Yeah, yeah, there's there's plenty of ugly cars. The Juke. I hate the juke. I think if there was a, a car I would say I actively disliked, I would say it was the the late nineties Mustangs. I didn't really like very much. I didn't think they looked very good. I they they looked so much better in the early nineties and then the cars that came after them looked so much better and I just thought there are like the nineteen ninety nine Mustang like, I just was boring. Like, it's angular and curvy and it's boring and Boring, boring, <laughs> and uh, I, I will, I will second you on the PT loser because I, I had a car accident and they put me in one as a rental and wait, they put you in a PT loser and what year was that? They put me in a PT loser. They took one look at him and they knew what car they were giving him. Yeah, they were like, "This is the car that you're getting," and and I was at the time I was driving a 2003 Dodge Neon, so I figured it couldn't get any worse. And then I got that one and I was like, "Oh my gosh, what?" What is going on? This is the slowest, most inconvenient vehicle. I went garage sailing and I bought two small end tables and I couldn't even fit them in the back of that thing. It was very impractical. Did the other people at the garage sale go like this at you? Because yeah. they your car? Yeah, they did. And what was crazy is they were selling an 82 Dodge Aries. And I was like, I want to buy that and drive that instead. I'd rather have that instead of this thing. But... Yes, yeah, so you should have bought that and then just said, you know what? Yeah. What? You know what? Bye, PT loser, and drove off in the air. He's going like this at it. Exactly. And it just left the rental car there. You deal with it. I'm out. I think the person would probably get charged for leaving a rental car there, although it's under your name. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I would have gotten in trouble with that one. So it, it was not meant to be, sadly. And I would have gotten in a lot of trouble with my wife for bringing home another car. We have We have rules about how many project cars I can have at a time, and they're there for a reason. Well, Anthony, we would love to sit and talk with you all night, but we want to be respectful of your time. 
Uh, do you have any any final thoughts? Any anything that you want to say or before we wrap things up? Make sure to pick up our calendars when they're out. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Can you tell people where they can find that? AnthonyRyanSchmidt.com. Okay, AnthonyRyanSchmidt.com, and we'll be sure to link to that. So, again, Anthony, thank you so much for for spending an hour with us. We just have been looking forward to this for so long, and we really appreciate you. And we love what you're doing and please keep doing it and we look forward to seeing where this this all takes you we're really excited for you bye nice one thanks all right see you anthony great talking to you tonight you too thanks anthony all right that was our time with anthony i want to give a special thank you again to anthony and his mom ramona for giving their time to this show and it was a delight to get to know both of them through this process and a delight to have you join us today. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. It really helps the show. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, please rate us five stars in the review. That will really help spread the word of the show far and wide. Again, a shout out to our patrons. You can learn more about supporting the show, buying our merch, the Diecast Day of Giving, and a whole lot more by visiting diecastbreakdown.com. And as always, we want to thank you for coming along with us for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags. Thanks for listening to Diecast Breakdown. If you enjoyed today's show, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts and tell a friend to listen in. Find Diecast Breakdown on your favorite social media platforms or visit diecastmedianetwork.com to learn more about this and our other projects. Diecast Breakdown is a presentation of Flying Valiant and the Diecast Media Network.